Hey, peace family. Happy Sunday. So the, the, the Wagner group was marching on Russia yesterday, and then all of a sudden they stopped, and it's all good. Less than 24 hours. I tell you what, it's like Jesus said in Matthew 24, see that you're not deceived. There is so much deception. Um, also in Matthew 24, it talks about even the elect would be deceived if it were possible. And it had me thinking, like, is it possible? You know, to answer that question, if it is possible. And I thought, yeah, I guess it is possible. I mean, many times Jesus says, see that you are not deceived. Let no man deceive you. Um, it can happen, right? We can be deceived. So, uh, strive to be those who are not deceived. We have the mind of the, of the Lord. We have the Holy Spirit. Uh, we have the Word of God, so we can, we can discern things. We can understand the patterns. We can understand, you know, uh, Scripture, the, the prophetic books point to so much. Um, and there's nothing new under the sun, Ecclesiastes tells us. What has been will be again. So praise the Lord for his word. We, uh, we've got that compass pointing to the true north. We have the blueprint. We can understand these things. So I wanted to say that about this, this Russia stuff. So much of it, I think, is political theater to begin with. Um, and, and what, there's news that the U.S. paid $6.2 billion or something to, to the Wagner Group to do this, um, this raid, so-called, on Russia. But it was understood and possibly communicated, probably, to Putin that, oh, we'll just get so far and then we'll stop. <laughs> so political theater. I think a lot of what we hear... Who knows how many of these devils and these people in positions of power are in cahoots with each other just to paint the narrative, right? Because at the highest levels, they're all worshiping demons, the devil. And these demons are telling them, you know, things that, uh, you know, just to pave the way for the end times, right? For, to create the chaos, to create the narrative and agenda so that this Antichrist figure can uh, come up. But... Yeah, don't be deceived, guys. We do have the mind of Christ. We have the word of God and prayer. And have a healthy skepticism about everything. Um, that's not a bad thing to do. Um, the Bereans in Acts of the Apostles, they listened to Paul. They listened to the word of God. But then they sought for themselves. They checked the scriptures daily to see if these things were true. Let us do the same. When we hear something, we can respectfully be like, all right, I hear you. But then go do your own research. Um, see what the Spirit tells you on as you check facts and realize things. And the Lord might enlighten you. You might be like, that's absolutely actually a lie. Or might check out and be like, all right, that person is right on. We are to judge those fruits all day. We are to judge those spirits all day, right? All right, real quick, guys. I want to um, speak on 2 Kings 6 and 7 today. Um, I heard some preaching today at my service and wrote down a few things, um, takeaways here. Number one thing I'll be speaking about is like in a moment, there's times and dispensations, things can look bad, their trajectory can be terrible, but in a moment, uh, things can change. And I'll give you an example from Second Kings here. <clears throat> uh, the miraculous can happen in, in that context as well. Um, you know, always leave room for miracles for the Lord to work in a special way. And then number three, to uh, share of the goodness of what the Lord has done. Share of uh, when we have witnessed his his hand in the world, and just sharing the gospel, the good news. So I'll speak on those three things here. Starting 2 Kings 6, uh, at verse 25, there was a great famine in Samaria. So that's kind of the context here, what's going on. It's really bad. These women made a, an agreement. They're like, hey, we'll uh, eat, you know, my son today because we're starving. Then we'll eat your son tomorrow. And they ate the one. I'll tell you, this stuff is coming too. No Jesus today because... Um, K-N-O-W him, if anyone is watching who doesn't, because these things are coming again. There's going to be famine in the, the seven-year tribulation. Um, yeah, so anyways, they did that. We boiled my son, verse 29, and we did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give you thy son, that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. You know, they're telling her the king, Hey, we're supposed to eat him. How crazy. It's going to be treacherous. It's going to be a horror movie of an existence this last week of years seven years um, get to know jesus today read his scripture <clears throat> read his word all right all right so it's looking terrible um this evil is of the lord verse 33 latter part of it um you know the lord is sovereign he's behind everything right 
And uh, obedience versus disobedience, blessings versus curses. You reap what you sow. We got to walk a certain way. Otherwise, there's repercussions. We have to. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of a living God, right? Uh, starting in chapter 7 then. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. Basically, he's saying, Tomorrow the trajectory is turning from this great famine and prices were very high to tomorrow the prices are so low and affordable stack up you'll be good amazing guys it's looking terrible and um and it is terrible uh the good news is is king jesus is coming soon that could be that tomorrow tomorrow things are great because why because tomorrow might be the day the lord catches us away uh, we will go to glory we'll get the glorified flesh it'll be all good so the whole thing's in perspective you know uh, do not fear so many times the exhortation to do not fear it's very hard you got to be in the word and this word is like oxygen because it is fearful sometimes I grapple within myself as I go through certain things I'm like I just want to get into an open field and like yell or go for a run Let's do some sprints and just be like Lord I just need to purge out this tension you know it's, it's to be understood there's tension during these days <clears throat> but keep in mind in a moment tomorrow Joseph, in a moment, head on the pillow in the prison at night, head in the on the pillow in the palace, second to Pharaoh. In a moment, these things can happen. The Red Sea moment. It was looking like game over. In a moment, that sea split. It became dry from that blowing wind. They walked on dry ground. In a moment, Jesus Christ did a sacrifice. He was on the cross. He wasn't killed. He, he gave up his spirit. He said, I have the power to... Um, give up my life and to take it up again and he did that crucifixion <clears throat> he chose the moment to die gave up his spirit and then three days later uh, took up his life broke the curse and i hope you guys can hear me it's just starting to rain here all right now i wanted to touch on that miraculous thing i was talking about second king seven verse six For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight, left their tents, the horses, the, everything, even the camp, and as it was, and fled for their life. All right, so, um, all right, so in a moment, the things changed, things became affordable, a blessing from the Lord. That's uh, miraculous in and of itself. And then even within that, the Lord did more miraculous things by uh, making the host of Syrians basically hear, um, wow, they hear all this, this great host. That's angels. That's the sons of God, I bet you. What else was it? You know, they, they manifested and the sound was there. It doesn't say they could see them though, right? Twilight, yeah, I guess it was dark, so they couldn't see, but they could hear. Wow. Um, guys, the Lord can do miracles. He can provide for us in, in, um, in ways we, we can't even imagine, right? Be encouraged by that. The Lord's hand is not too short to help and bless us. All right, some lepers came. Lepers, uh, they were struggling with stuff also. And, um, yeah, so they needed things, and um, they're like, we're going to die, so, you know, what was that? Yeah, basically, in verse 4, they're saying, if we say we will enter into the city, and the famine is in the city, and we shall die there, and if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we'll live, and if they kill us, we shall die. And they rose up. Uh, to the camp of the Syrians. They were kind of bold to do that. That's some faith, right? They're thinking, we're going to die anyways. Let's roll the dice. Let's go there. If they have mercy on us, we'll get some food. We'll be okay. They'll let us live. If they're mad that we're here, they'll kill us. We're going to die anyways. That still takes some faith, right? Instead of sitting there and die, they're like, guys, let's go forth. Let's try. And so many times in Scripture we hear that. It says, perhaps the Lord will do this or that. Um, even David, when he was praying for his baby, uh, from Bathsheba, 
he was praying and fasting and saying when the child died he said you know he was like that because he was thinking perhaps the Lord shall revive him and he'll be okay right so the faith of the lepers I see here as well oh sorry guys I hope it's not too noisy all right so yeah the lepers came right and they saw the camp abandoned they're like what cha-ching they're like you gotta be kidding me <clears throat> uh, they went into one tent and ate and drank carried silver gold raiment they went and hid it came again entered into another tent carried it also and went and hid it wow these guys are getting some loot they were like wow this is amazing we were about to die and now we have plenty verse 9 thank you Jesus then they said one to another we do not well this day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning and light, some mischief will come upon us. So they realize this is a miraculous thing that happened. And uh, we don't, we're not doing the right thing, though, by being quiet about this. We should speak of this uh, miraculous thing. And they're like, if we don't do that, mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they said to him, uh, we are the camp of the Syrians. There's no man there. And they found all this stuff there. And he called to the porters and they told it to the king's house within. All right, so that's the gist of it right there. But basically, a third point I just wanted to kind of end with here is to uh, share of the goodness of the Lord, share of the good news. So has the Lord done something good in your guys' lives? Has he done something miraculous in your life? Has he done something that you know only the Lord could do? And that you see the generosity of it, and it's like, Lord, you are so kind and gracious and <clears throat> kind to me to do this thing. Um, don't sit on those things. And I encourage you guys to record those things. I record, I got this calendar thing, um, and I label it blessings. And like every day before I'm reading scripture, I'm, I'm recounting the previous day and I'm writing blessings from it. Because it's just that evident now. <clears throat> There's so many blessings from the hand of the Lord. I don't want to forget them, and I want to acknowledge the Lord in them. And, and I'm thankful as I write them down unto the Lord. So I encourage you guys to do the same. And then also you can use that list. If you have some fellowship with some friends or family, or just as the Lord gives you a remembrance of the thing, you can tell of that blessing. And it's funny how the Lord will pull that stuff up at different times, and then you share that blessing with other people, and you bless them, right? And you share the goodness of the Lord. So... Uh, my pastor was talking about his exhortation was to share the good news and he's like who comes to mind who do you think and i think that's fine to think about that but i'm always like for me the the veto power the stamp of approval it's like prey on a thing too right because your thought your brain your mind might think of a person but just check with the holy spirit too right i say holy spirit okay you know because a thing that pops in your mind may be from the holy spirit but it may also be I don't know, it may not be, right? It might just be our own mind, our own um, effort to think on a thing. So I don't know. I just, I, with everything, I'm like, I pray on everything. I take everything to the Lord. <clears throat> I think that's a good, a very good thing as well. Because it might be, you might think of a person, you might think it's good to share with them. But just see what the Holy Spirit has to say. The Holy Spirit might have someone else who's going to go bless them. And the Holy Spirit might be like, no, don't say that. You struggle with sharing Jesus or something to family or to a certain person. And you might be like, yeah, that's true. Just see what the Holy Spirit has to say. And as you guys seek the Holy Spirit more on everything, you'll get that prompting, you'll get that confirmation. It's, it's, it's hard to describe, especially in, in this video, but uh, it will come. You'll get that check in your spirit where you're like, this is the proper, this is the way to go. So things can happen and change in a moment. A miraculous thing can happen leading to that. And then additional miraculous things can happen after that transition from a, a certain trajectory to in a moment something different and then share of those good things you see from the Lord uh, be a blessing to others that's what we're here for add to the stream of life more than you take from it be a good ambassador for Christ I'm going to wrap this up I'm sorry it's probably really loud for you guys but thanks for watching my video please hit the thumbs up subscribe to my channel and share this video and God willing as the rain stops I will see you tomorrow have a good night guys God bless you